on April 2nd. I was in line to go to confession at a, at a local church, and I knew he had died. That was the moment where I felt the closest to him. Now that he was on the other side, now he really knew me. He was a man who had been transformed by the love of God. He loved his vocation. That's what awakened in people to not be afraid to answer if God is calling. It was a taste of the Father's love. His greatest accomplishment was his response to grace. I'm Sister Grace Dominic with the Sisters of Life, and we're here at the John Paul II Shrine in DC, and I'm really looking forward to sharing a little bit of remembering my, my love for John Paul II and his influence in my life. So let's go have a look. Oh my gosh, this is where he instilled and imbued the Spirit of God that he awakened uh, in the Polish people the homily that he gave, he was calling down the Holy Spirit. Veni Sancti Spiritu! Veni Sancti Spiritu! It's awesome, it was awesome. World Youth Day. It feels like it was just the other day. I was working as a journalist and I was sent to cover Toronto. Hundreds and thousands of young people who were on fire for their faith. I'd never seen anything like that before in my life. And, and John Paul II, he was 82 years old. <laughs> it was almost like this defiance. He banged his crozier on the ground like, you won't stop me. This is my flock. My brother's life is hugely influential in my vocation. He has Duchenne muscular dystrophy and had this huge conversion, receiving the gift of redemptive suffering. What I saw in John Paul II was a little bit of an echo of what I saw in my brother. At the closing mass of World Youth Day in Toronto, he said these words, which were indelibly etched on my heart. We are not the sum of our weaknesses and failures. We are not the sum of our weaknesses and failures. We are the sum of the Father's love for us. We are the sum of the Father's love for us. And our real capacity to become the image of His Son. And our real capacity to become the image of His Son. Not only do you have the capacity for it, that's what you were made for. It seemed surreal, it seemed unfathomable. Like, like, now what do we do? <laughs> My generation, we, we always had him. It looks like these are notes that pilgrims wrote to John Paul II during their visit here. <laughs> this one's so sweet. <laughs> Have fun in heaven. The graces of his life continue. Like, that's how generous God is. I mean, this speaks of the generosity of God, that when we are faithful, that when we respond, the grace for the world is immeasurable. I think a saint is someone who is running towards God. A saint is someone who falls down and lets God pick them up. To see the names of all the people that he beatified and canonized, grouped in different years, it's just so overwhelming. He made holiness accessible. The ordinariness of your life, live that with extraordinary love. And you can see that he honored that. He saw that in these heroic men and women who lived their little fidelities. I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed because it, it's, it's so personal to me. We go on pilgrimages to deepen our faith. God gives us food for the journey. He gives us His very flesh and His blood to continue to transform us to Himself. People can come here to DC to, to learn and grow in their devotion of John Paul II. 
just hearing his voice again, looking at his pictures, remembering just reawakens that desire in my heart. Come and be inspired. Come and be inspired by the life and legacy of someone who has been so, who had been so transformed by the love of Christ. Come and be inspired.